Hi guys, it's Dakota. Thanks for tuning in. I am outside today enjoying this beautiful weather. I came out earlier to do some grounding and some earthing and my horse was outside in the pasture and I thought, oh, this will be so awesome. I'm going to do a video outdoors and, and you'll you know, get to see the horse and it'll be so nice. And by the time I went in, got the computer, came out, set up the chair, got a table for the, for the computer. He had already gone back in his stall and he really hasn't been out. So it might be kind of hot out there. I don't know. Um, it's a beautiful day out. It is gorgeous. So I'm sort of sitting on my swing. I'm going to try not to swing. I just realized I was swinging. I apologize for that. I want to also apologize. You're going to probably hear a lot of noise. It's the traffic out on the main highway there. I live I am surrounded by woods. Um, my house is pretty secluded. I live about 700 feet off of the road though. There's some houses right on the main road and um, th but but we're still we're separated by woods and I don't know how they deal with that traffic but I think it bounces off the trees, climbs over the trees and ends up in my yard because during the week uh, during business woo business hours it is so busy and so noisy drives me crazy so apologies for that I have to try to find a, a quiet place outside next time uh, I wanted to talk to you today about teaching one witchcraft 101 and how that kind of all came about for me I have read over the past year and I've watched a few videos on um, people's perspectives of their own perceptions of um, what they get out of teachers that you know or people that are teaching witchcraft 101 some are great and some are some are not so great that I, in my personal opinion what I have to say is this that one how it came about for me to teach so as you know I, I did not grow up in a religious household I was free to you know go to church if I wanted to go to church with my friends or not go to church it didn't matter um, I knew at a very young age that I was different I was just different and you know I did not I was not mainstream there was something different didn't know what to call it then I started um, getting involved with occult things I guess if you want to even call it that probably were interested in different things age 11 12 13 by the age of 13 I had my first um, tarot deck which was the Rider Waite deck. I still have it today. It is at the shop. And um, so I knew at a very young age. But I didn't have I didn't have a mentor. Like I didn't have anybody to talk about it to. My friends, they were not into it. They weren't interested. I was weird. So I couldn't really talk to them so much about it. In my early 20s, there was a group in California that now they weren't it wasn't a coven it was not I'm gonna say that it was not a witchcraft group however there were witches within the group they were a very spiritual very enlightened very loving group they invited me into their group and it was just the best of times and I learned oodles of stuff I learned so much from them and that was sort of a a door opened for me and I realized that gee I'm not the only one that is different or ha have these ideas or think differently about things and um, so that was really a, a, a door that opened for me and I am so grateful to them and I am still family with some of them still to this day and if you're watching I I love you beyond so um, and then I started because that door opened I was able at that point then to realize that witchcraft was my way and of, of, of expressing who I was and that was what was meaningful to me and so I started practicing more I started reading more and I'm going to tell you without giving away my age the only 
books that really were available that I knew of that I could get my hands on were Raymond Buckland's Big Blue Book, Uncle Bucky's book, um, uh, Silver Raven Wolf's Solitary Witch Book, and Scott Cunningham's uh, Wicca Solitary Book, whatever it was called. And those were the books that I had, and those were the books that I started with. And so, therefore, that is what I thought it was. Cut and dry. Because I didn't have anybody that I could talk to about these things. and because, Except for my, my spiritual group. But, again, you know, this was, again, this was like in the, you know, we were... And in this group, there were elders. So it wasn't just like, you know, a bunch of young girls, young kids, boys and girls got together and we had a group. Um, the group mainly consisted of elders, you know, parents and grandparents, elders, and age-wise, um, age-wise elders and grandparents. And, um, and then there were the younger folk, not little kids, but the younger adult teen uh, into early you know 20 age agers and but I you know but like I said so witchcraft witchcraft really was not a topic of study when we would get together so I never felt I don't know if it was that I just didn't feel comfortable or or I just thought well they don't know about this stuff because it's never been brought up I, I really don't know I can't tell you all I know is I just felt like I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it, anybody to mentor me about, anybody to answer questions that I, I wanted answered or needed answered. So the bottom line was there was no mentor, there was no teacher. And so I continued to study uh, and, and do my own studying and then more books came out and I bought the books and I read the books and you know, did my solitary practice to the best of my ability. I started to learn through the books that you you could indeed change things that you were reading in the book. That if, say, Scott Cunningham had designed a Samhain ritual from start to finish, that you didn't have to word for word, item for item, tool for tool, match what he was saying you didn't have to but back then you know early on that's what i thought i was in the box and i thought if that's what they're saying that's what i'm doing and it wasn't until later on when i started getting older and realizing that oh and there was more books on the market became more available and I started reading more of the books that I finally started to realize that, oh, I don't have to say this. I can actually put my own words in there. Wow. Okay. Hmm. It, that was interesting. And, and it was scary. You know, it was scary at first because you didn't know. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. So, um, anyway, years passed. And then I knew, I felt like I had practiced all that I could practice. I had read all the books that I could possibly read. And I was just getting the same information over and over and over again. It was just a different author. And I still sort of feel that way today. I, I do. I, I'm sorry. I, you, the, a lot of the modern witchcraft books today, they all pretty much say the same stuff. Except um, the author, it's in the it's in the author's own words. That's why we have authors that we like and authors that we don't. There's some authors that I just I don't care for their style of writing, but they may write. If it's a modern witchcraft 101 book, they might write about the beginnings. You know, they might talk about Gerald Gardner and and um, Alexander Sanders and and how how it all started. But I don't like his style or her style. But then I get this book. I like this author. Oh, look, they're saying the same thing. I already knew that because it was in Silver's book or it was in Scott's book or Gerald Gardner or um, Raymond Buckland's book. And um, But I like his style and resonates with me. So, anyway. Um, 
but I felt like there was still something missing and I didn't know where to find that puzzle piece you know I didn't know I I, I kept buying the books and the books either I didn't understand what the books were saying and there's a, there's a lot more books than just those books I'm telling you you know the beginner books there's a, a oh, there's so many more books out there so many more great books out there and some of the books are so great and some of the books are so great by great authors my mind sometimes can't process that great work that they're writing about I need a mentor I need someone to sit down with me one-on-one -on -one and go this is what they mean you know this is this is what this means or this is my interpretation of what it means and then at least you can go oh okay now I get it a little bit better and then you can either make your own decision about it or or not so I went through my formal training so that um, I could find what was what was missing and uh, I am grateful for that I am beyond grateful for that time in my life as well uh, my teachers most excellent great knowledge and I, I learned in leaps and bounds I probably um, you know maybe I wasn't the best student I don't know but I know that I learned a lot and I know that I'm very grateful I will say this there were pieces there there was stuff after <laughs> and, and even during uh, the training that I was really surprised that I wasn't learning I, I didn't get that they didn't give me that information and it was information that maybe I had just touched on in books and didn't really get the whole concept of it and was sort of oh well I'll take this formal training and and then I'll get the information and then it'll make more sense but then I didn't get that information it's just something that they didn't teach I didn't know uh, and it's all okay it's all okay because what I learned I was able to then figure out how to resource out research other areas other people and gather the information that I needed so my point with the teaching 101 is and, and so and so then what happened was it was probably about two years later I um, I don't know I had a, one of those aha moments I don't know if I was doing journey work um, if it was through meditation or if I was driving down the road and you know spirit or whatever you want to call it came through and and whatever I, I just had this moment I had this moment of knowing of knowing like inside of me knowing that I was so grateful for the opportunity that I had that was laid out before me and I truly believe that when the student is ready the teacher will appear I don't know who said it Buddha I don't know <laughs> I believe it I believe it and I had that moment about two years after my formal training and it was that moment it was like a knowing like I heard it but I felt it and it said you need to gift back gift back gift back I had all those years of not knowing all those years of not having anybody help me all those years of not knowing where to look all those years of saying I read this but is this you know is this what it means I mean I you know and yeah I know that there I know that you can read stuff and go well what does it mean to you and I understand that and and I get that and I trust that but that isn't what I'm saying I just know that it came over me that I needed to gift back it was it was I had been given a gift of some structure and some knowledge and an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one training with somebody and I wanted to be able to gift that back to others because there's so many others I know from having a shop I know that there are 
there's more beginners than not is what it feels like and I want to be able to help and I want to be able to at least give some guidelines at least give some resources at least answer whatever questions I can answer from my own knowledge base not to say that I have the answer I don't have the answer but I might have an answer that can help guide that student that person that customer to the source that they need and that's how it all started and that's how it started and I had been circling here in North Carolina with a group of fabulous ladies that I still know and love today I love you guys and we still circle today and um, I asked them I'm doing this would you guys like to I've been told that I I'm, I'm gonna give this back and would you guys like to be gifted and they said yes and so that was my first class uh, a few of my ladies that in my group and but I actually made an announcement at my store that I was going to do it and I had students come and so we had this class and that's how it started and it was so fun I mean it was really fun and what the funnest part of it was was how much I learned from these students we had students who said I'm so grateful that you're offering this because I'm so drawn to this but I'm in the closet I cannot nobody can find out that I'm doing this and so I don't know how else to learn about it and I'm so grateful that you're doing this and but understand that I know nothing and I'm like you're the perfect candidate I mean you're the perfect candidate because um, a lizard <laughs> um, because you're going to I'm going to take you from A to Z with the information that I know and let me be clear the information that is not my oath bound information because I am still very bound to that and um, so this is just the information that I knew beforehand and then taking knowledge that is not an oath bound and mixing it in and my own experience and some from beginner books of, of authors that I do find reputable that I do like um, and we had an awesome class it was great and to hear those those new students you know tell me that they are still in the closet that um, nobody knows that they're at the class um, and I don't know what the stories they they were telling their families or friends or where they were on on class nights but um, they came to every single class and knew nothing and I was so I was excuse me I was so taken aback by what they did know and my and six years later what my students new students are still surprising me um, still surprising me profound stuff where did that come from you know uh, like wait a minute I I'm supposed to know that and how did you know that and um, so as, as far as the teaching thing like you know if you're opposed to anyone teaching 101 witchcraft 101 I mean stop and ask yourself why like why are you why are you afraid of that now I do understand we don't want to there, there's going to be those um, that was an ant there yeah the woes of sitting outside and I'm bugophobic especially spiders um, the woes of and the bad things 
the not so good things of teaching is making sure that your teacher is reputable because if they only just read one book say they only just read you know Scott Cunningham's book or whatever um, there's more to it than that folks there's more to it than that and we don't want to mislead anyone what I try to do in my class is and I know my students <laughs> I know they hate me but at the end they're gonna love me because <laughs> I rarely answer a question directly because I want you to learn I want you to do the work so that you'll remember it so I will give you the resources I will give you some hints and I, I want you to be the best which that you can be I, I want you to be the best I want you to I want you to have the most that you can have and I want you to know as much as your brain will hold and I want you to ask questions sometimes I don't have the answer and I own it and I'm honest about it I tell you I tell you up front you know what I don't know I don't know the answer to that if I think it's a question that between the student between you and I we can probably find out let's 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 study I'm gonna do my homework you do your homework and see if we can find an answer when we come to class next week let's see what we got what did you get this is what I got if I think it's a question like wow that's really deep you know like that's deep I don't know if you're gonna be able to like really find that uh, then I do go to I go to my mentors to my elders to uh, those reputable uh, the people that I consider my reputable elders whatever teachers and um, and get help from them and uh, but if you're new and you've only just read one book you might want to rethink teaching because when you get asked a question just like I do at times and I don't know I know where I can get the answer or I go and do the work myself and try to find the answer but I love students I love new people who know nothing or even students who know something because I get all kinds of students I get the students that don't know anything zero zip like I said they're in the closet and they they've never been able to even talk about it I get those students to the students who have been practicing 20 30 years in and out in and out in and out because they get to a certain point and then they get frustrated because they don't know where to turn they don't know how to find that piece of the puzzle and so then they back off and then they start again and um, and so I get those students that come in and some will be like yeah I I know that part because I've already you know that part I know they're still very active in it they still learn and they learn something every single every single subject they learn from we learn from each other so I think it's really important to um, you know we teach each other and if we didn't have people that taught 101 class then you would have a witchcraft 101 class uh, then you would have people like me who for 30 years um had pieces of the puzzle missing and that is frustrating it's so frustrating and I don't want people to give up on something that they know is their calling so I don't have a problem with teaching witchcraft 101 and that's where I stand the gods you know like I said that that was a message that came through whether it came through from the gods which is what I feel but I don't know it wasn't it wasn't somebody told me in my ear all of a sudden I was overwhelmed 
with the message that I needed to gift back because I had been gifted and that's why I do it and that is my thought on teaching witchcraft 101 I hope this has helped and uh, have a great week and I will see you next week bye y'all